it is season eight of Overwatch 2. I am going to be reading you guys all the patch notes that are going to be released with season eight. It's going to be a little scuffed. They're not released yet, so it's not a form that we normally read. So bear with me here. So with season eight, we get our new hero, hero Maga. Introducing Maga, a long-awaited tank hero, comes with a rapid-fire personality, massive stature, and brawl-centric abilities. Uh, Maga has been added to the lineup. Incendiary chain gun, primary fire, is an automatic weapon that ignites enemies on repeated impacts. Uh, volatile chain gun, secondary fire, automatic weapon that deals crits to those burning enemies. I love playing Ash, so uh, you're going to see me throwing a lot of dynamites, setting people on fire, and then Maga is going to be able to crit those enemies that are on fire. Beautiful, I love it. One of his abilities is Overrun. Which is basically charge forward and stomp to launch enemies. You are unstoppable while charging. Um, cardiac overdrive ability too. Nearby allies take reduced damage and heal by dealing damage. Uh, cage fight is, is his ultimate. It does, does it, which uh, deploys a barrier that traps yourself and enemies. And you can also gain unlimited ammo while you're inside of it. Awesome ability. It's one of my favorites. Um, Berserker, which is his passive, gain temporary health when dealing critical damage. Pretty cool. So, one of the events, um, is Battle of the Beast, because this battle pass is basically like, a, a beast type of battle pass. Um, so this says, fight in a powerful brawl with epic and powerful grand beasts in a, four, in a fun 4v4 PvP VE game mode. The Battle of the Beast, oh, the Battle of the Beast. In a clash of grand beasts, protect yours while coordinating with your team to defeat the enemy beasts. You'll be able to play MAGA for free as the only tank to play in this mode. Uh, or try your hand as the many other hunter-themed heroes and tear through the grand beast health while trying to avoid powerful abilities. May the best hunters win. New game mode that you guys can try. Pretty interesting. I might try it on stream. Might be a, might be a new upload as well. Uh, might try it with my chat. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, also coming with this new season is... Uh, I was going to say Alice in the Wonderland. Winter Wonderland 2023. Bring in the holidays with the Winter, Winter Wonderland event. Check out your heroes celebrating in style with all new holiday skins. Beat challenges and unlock one free legendary skin of your choice. Choose from the stylish... Formal well, uh, I can't even speak. It's one AM. Sorry, almost formal wear skins for Cassidy or Baptiste, or the cozy winter jammies Alari skin. Dive into the action with the returning fan favorite event modes like Maze Snowball, Offensive, and Yeti Hunt, with new challenges and rewards. Winter Winter uh, Winter Wonderland launches on Tuesday, December nineteenth. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, introducing weapon skins. A new way to customize your heroes. We're kicking off things with the hard light theme for Rhine, Reaper, and Mercy. These sleek designs with custom visual UI and sound, uh, sorry, custom visual and sound effects can be equipped with any of these heroes' skins. Look out for other weapon skins coming in the future. That actually sounds pretty fucking badass, I have to admit. So you're going to be able to use any of these other skins' weapons while wearing your favorite skin. Which I think that's how it should be. If you like a skin of one gun and then you like another skin, you should be able to mix and match. I think that's pretty cool. We're excited about weapon customization. And this is the first, just the first step. As we create more weapon skins, we want to hear about what you love about the skins. Your feedback is key as we evolve weapon skins and introduce new ways, uh, new looks, and more ways to customize your heroes. General updates. Endorsements. Endorsement score required to reach level 5 is reduced. Endorsement score to uh, decay at uh, endorsement score decay at level four reduced slightly, and endorsement decay at level five is reduced. So there is a hero mastery. Next wave of hero mastery courses will launch starting on January second, twenty twenty four, in a five week event featuring a new course each week with new challenges and cosmetic rewards to earn. Uh, a new set of five hero mastery courses for Lucio, May, Diva, Echo, and Genji have been added. Lucio courses will unlock January 2nd, and a new course for a new hero will be available every week for the next four weeks. 
and an exciting new way to view our Hero Mastery replays is now available with replay bookmarks. Uh, yada yada yada. Replay bookmarks can now be in uh can be enabled from replay viewer at any time. Once enabled, players can instantly skip to the important moments during a run. A list of bookmarks bookmarks course runs and records is shown on the left side of the screen, and players can quickly choose bookmarks from there or by tapping the indicators on the replay skimmer. A, a new leaderboard from Hero Mastery courses released in Season 6 has been added, and previous leaderboards will return in a future patch for players to view any time. Uh, I don't know what this means. Reticle changes. Extra reticle settings have been added for specific heroes with multiple weapon modes. Players can now customize the modes separately or keep them in sync. The following heroes have access to the new options, which is Ana, Ash, Bastion, Lifeweaver, Mercy, and Ramatra, Widowmaker. A new option for the reticles outline color has been added and the outline opacity has been separated from the main opacity. Uh, players who have previously hidden their dot by the setting its opacity to zero will now need to uh, set the dot size to zero instead. In a further effort to discourage players from repeatedly leaving games and impacting the experience for others, we are increasing the suspension times for leaving too many matches from unranked modes. I think you have to leave like 25% of your games or something ridiculous. Leaving four, oh yeah, oh sorry, leaving four out of your last 20 games played will result in a 20 minute suspension from being able to queue for, mo ga for most game modes, including unranked and competitive. And leaving six out of your last 20 games played will result in a four hour suspension from being able to queue for most game modes, including unranked and competitive. <laughs> These suspension thresholds only occur when you leave multiple games among your most recent games played. We only know this may impact those who are having issues with their connection when playing Overwatch 2 and would encourage testing your connection in custom games or the practice range as you troubleshoot your connection prior to playing game modes that involve other players. Troubleshoot troubleshooting your connection Overwatch 2 can be found in this article, blah, blah, blah. You don't care about that. Oh, this is interesting. Competitive play updates. Your MMR decay now only occurs for competitive play at the start of the new season. MMR Decay is now is not applied to roles that qualify for a rank. Example, a player that won five games and got a competitive update will not decay at the end of a season. If a player does not have a rank already who won three games and did not get a competitive update, that player will decay at the end of the season. Uh, if the player does not if the player does have a rank, they only need to play one match in the season to keep their rank for the next season. Uh, I thought there was gonna be a little bit more interesting updates. Uh, this is the most important one. Hero updates. Now we're getting into the hero updates. Maximum ultimate charge pre uh, preserved on hero swap reduced from 25 to 15% and added a hero specific options to every character to adjust the rumble strength of each of their pl uh, of their abilities. The developers had to say swapping heroes is fundamental to the gameplay of Overwatch and this ultimate charge refund mechanic has done a great job of decreasing friction there. It has helped matches feel less one-sided as it functions as a soft comeback mechanic. Uh, however, it has helped reinforce the perception that is always that is most always an advantage to counter swap upon dying, which ideally isn't true and requires some consideration due to how powerful ultimate abilities can be. We are reducing the amount of ultimate charge preserved by a significant amount in order to see if the increased cost of switching meaningfully impacts player behavior while retaining the benefits uh, this mechanic provides. So hopefully we get to see... There we go. This is the change I do not agree with. Uh, Doomfist Meteor Strike now generates 75 health per second while in the air. I don't think that should be a thing. But the ultimate cost is increased by 16%. They're making too many characters heal themselves, and I don't like it. One of the most effective uh, uses for this ultimate ability, like Meteor Strike, is also to save as an escape in order to grab a health pack instead of using it against its foes. Doomfist will now recover health during the targeting phase so that it can be used more offensively. The next one, Junker Queen. Oh, we heard a lot about these changes in the, the latest developer blog. Um... Junker Queen Scattergun spread reduced by 8%. Tightening the spread on Junker Queen Scattergun will make it more effective at range against small targets and give her slightly more team fight presence before fully committing to getting close to the enemy team. I just had a Junker Queen in quick play just one shot me. 
I don't know about that. Next thing is Maga, the new character release. The base health reduced from 500 to 350, and they gave him armor from 0 to 150. So basically same, 500 health, and his head hit volume reduced by 15%. Okay, interesting. Uh, incendiary and volatile uh, chain guns, the spread for firing both guns reduced by 15%. Fire rate multiplier for firing both guns reduced from 25 to 0%. Damage per shot increased from 4.5 to 5. Uh, fall off damage, a uh, fall off range increased from 25 to 30 meters. Max ammo increased from 300 to 350. And movement, sp uh, movement speed penalty reduced from 20 to 15% per gun. Wow, so that's pretty cool. Overrun can no longer uh, be interrupted by hack. Uh, damage reduction increased from 30 to 50%. Uh, cardiac overdrive lifesteal Increased from 60 to 70%. Ooh, that's going to be interesting. And Berserker, which is his passive, his overhealth conversion rate increased from 40 to 50%. The developers had to say, we got a lot of constructive feedback from players when Maga was available to try during his free preview weekend, which I didn't get to play because I was at BlizzCon Feels Bad, man. Uh, so we've adjusted his kit for his official launch to give him the ability to last longer in a fight. Nothing wrong with lasting longer. Yes. Ramatra. Base health. Oh, they're changing a lot. This next season is going to be wild. Season 8 and season 9 are actually going to be wild, and I can't wait, especially for season 9 changes. Uh, so, Ramatra. Base health reduced from 300 to 200, and base armor increased from 0 to 100. Void accelerator. Projectile size increased from 0 0.075 to 0 0.1 meters. Holy. And damage increased from 4.5 to 5. And they had to say, Ramatra is quite powerful during his nemesis form, though his base Omnic form may be too easy to ignore for a tank hero. We're adding some power there to even out the trade-offs between the two forms, and with the Omnic form having an even better range damage, while nemesis forms pummel can pierce enemy defenses. Next thing is a lot of tank changes. Sigma. Experimental barrier regeneration rate reduced from 100 to 85 health per second. Thank you. Sigma has been a way too powerful. Like, he's like, he, he, not powerful, but he, he's been a very well rounded tank, but he's always like a safe pick to play. Oh, he's very annoying. And they had to say Sigma has a very effective defensive options between his experimental barrier and kinetic grass. The barrier regeneration rate is reduced in order to create more opportunity to attack Sigma directly. Uh, Winston Tesla Cannon can now ignores armor damage reduction. So that's going to be cool. This is a special property for the Tesla Cannon intended to increase Winston's effectiveness against other tanks with a large armor health pools. So maybe Dive might come back. Uh, he will still, he still won't specialize in dealing with tanks since he's a single tar target damage output is low, but it would be less of an extreme disadvantage. So that's going to be kind of interesting for the May players out there. Endothermic Blaster. Maximum ammo reduced from 150 to 120. Oh, it was nerfed. <laughs> uh, we're re reducing the maximum ammo to limit how long May is able to continuously slow an enemy target. Now the primary fire deals more damage. That's pretty funny. Soldier 76 Biotic Field cooldown increased from 15 to 18 seconds. Ah, oh, come on. Uh, Soldier's self-sustain ability is potent and makes him difficult to deal damage while he's while he's in its area. Uh, rather than reduce its role healing output, again, we're increasing the amount of time between consecutive uses to open a lar lar longer periods of vulnerability. Sombra EMP ability lockout duration increased from 1.5 to 3 seconds. Sombra's becoming a little bit insane. And damage reduced from 30 to 25% of current health. The 1.5 second lockout duration didn't feel impactful enough for an ultimate ability, but generally EMP is more interesting and effective when it's focused on the disabling aspect rather than the damage, which I think is true. I like that change, even though I hate Sombra. Torb Torbjorn! Overload. Overhealth increased from 75 to 100. Kind of interesting. May gets nerfed, but Torb gets buffed. And they said the health decrease on Overload... Severely impacted Torb's overall effectiveness, so we're now reverting that change. 
And the biggest change that I like, Tracer Pulse Pistols, damage increased from 5.5 to 6, which is, uh, instead of doing, I think the quick math is, instead of doing 220 damage per clip, it's now 240 to the body, not including headshots. And this damage value has been changed quite a few times over the course of Overwatch 2 and is now back to Tracer's original damage. It was previously adjusted due to a couple of bugs with the Pulse Pistol falloff range, and the spread being much better than uh, than they should have. I think with a Winston buff and a Tracer buff, I think... And a Doom buff, I think Dive might be back on the menu. Uh, now, Support, aka Healers, Baptiste, Biotic Launcher, Primary Fire, reduced from 4. Uh, 45 to 36. And the developers had to say, Baptiste has a high amount of sustained damage... And that's crazy because he's supposed to be a healer. In addition to his various survival tools, uh, we would prefer to keep his long cooldown abilities feeling impactful. So we're going to be pulling back some of some of uh on some of the, his damage potential here. Brig whip shot damage reduced from eighty to seventy. Thank God, Brig ended up being the best performing support hero in the game by a fair margin since the last patch. It's likely a result of more than. Just damage breakdown change that she received, but it was a significant increase to her offensive, uh, her offense, so we're reverting it, and it will continue to evaluate her further. That's because they buff characters that doesn't need to be buffed in the first place. Uh, so Kiri. Uh, healing of Fuda projectile speed increased from 14 to 18 meters per second. And protection, Suzu. Invulnerability duration reduced from 0.85 to 0.65 seconds. Fuck immortality. Healing explosion increase. Uh, wait, healing explosion increase from forty to eighty health. Oh, so it heals more. The healing, the protection Suzu grants immortality, and now it heals you for almost hundred health. Oh, he I love immortality. Let's see what they have to say. Reducing the protection Suzu and, vul and vulnerability time further will help feel less frustrating to play against, but still enable it to have big playmaking moments. Although, with a uh, stricter timing requirement to counterbalance that power loss, we're making Kiri's healing more reliable. We'll see how that turns out. I, I, I don't want to judge so harshly because I haven't experienced it yet. I need to experience things. Reading it is one thing, experiencing it is another. Uh, Mercy, uh-oh. Blizzard, I haven't even read this yet, but if you nerf Mercy, you're going to get some bad comments. And you don't touch Mercy, even though you sh should probably delete her from the game. Activating Valkyrie no longer disconnects the staff from its target. You're lucky. You're lucky, Blizzard. This is just a small quality of life improvement to heal to to, to help keep Mercy healing or powering up her allies' penalty with without penalty for activating her ultimate. You guys dodged a bullet there. You guys were about to get so many fucking threats on Twitter. Map updates. So we're done with basically all the the what do you call it? Character changes, new holiday decorations added to the following maps. Oh, Perioso. Completely botched that name. Sorry. New Queen Street, W, and Watchpoint Gibraltar. Wow. New lighting scenarios, Antarctic Peninsula, morning. Oh, this is actually pretty interesting. More. I'm going to be honest with you guys. There needs to be more Christmas maps. More Christmas maps because Christmas King's Row is fucking beautiful. And you know what? I'm just going to say it again so everyone can hear me in the back. Everyone in the back, Christmas is better than Halloween. Uh, let me know in the comments about how I'm right and Halloween sucks. Uh, so bug fixes. Uh, I don't know if you want to read all the bug fixes, but Hero Mastery, uh, you know, here, bug, bug, bug fixes are blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm not going to read the bug fixes. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. Uh, starting from the beginning... Uh, I do like the new um, general updates for endorsements is all right. The weapon skins, introducing weapon skins is actually pretty interesting to me. I like that. Uh, Doomfist, I do not like the Doomfist change at all. I, I think they're making too many characters heal over time or have a self-healing ability. I hate it. Not good. Um, that's just me. They're making it like World of Warcraft, like I've been mentioning in the past. Like World of Warcraft, if you played in uh, OG WoW, there was no healing abilities for uh, all these characters. You had like a healing pots, and then you had the characters that would heal be your healers. Now World of Warcraft is like every single fucking character has a self heal, and it's boring as shit. 
Like, not every single character should have a healing ability. My opinion. Junker Queen. I don't think she needed a change, but she got a change. Uh, Maga. I mean, I haven't played him initially, so I don't know if these changes are going to be good or not. Ramatra, we'll see. I think Ramatra and Doomfist need... If they're going to buff Ramatra and Doomfist, they're going to need to change the explosion thing. So if Ramatra or Doomfist was blocking and you stick them with a Pulse Bomb, they need to take that fucking explosion damage, not like the blocked damage. I, I, I don't know. That's just me uh, speaking as a DPS player, I guess. Uh, Sigma Barrier, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, Sigma ne does need a little tuning. I feel like he's overall a great tank. But he does need some way that he can die. Winston's going to be very interesting. With the Doom change, I think Dive is going to be back. May. Everyone, fuck May. Am I, can, I, can I get an amen in chat? Fuck May. Uh, Soldier 76, I feel like, is a very consistent and reliable character. So we'll see what his biotic field does. I don't think 3 seconds is going to do much. Even though 3 seconds is a fucking eternity. Three seconds is a long time. I don't care what... That's another... Can I get another amen? Sombra, I do feel like her EMP needs to be a little stronger. It's a little too weak right now. Um, and it's an ultimate. Uh, I do think they are doing going in the right way with the EMP being more of a disabling... Having a huge... A better disabling factor instead of damage. I like that. Because she's a hacker. She, it's not like EMP 40% damage. It's EMP... They can't use their abilities. I like that. Torbjorn, W, Tracer, W, Bap, W, nerf that character, broken as fuck, another immortality character, uh, Brig, W, fuck Brig, uh, Kiri, L, fuck that character, deserves to be nerfed even more, um, and Mercy, I'm not going to say anything about Mercy because I don't want death threats. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy this. Let me know what's your favorite. Let me know what you guys think about these videos. I appreciate you guys. Love you. And please follow because I... Please follow. Okay, friends. YouTube thinks you might like this next video. So let me know if they're right.